Hello viewers, SuperGT here, back with some more kart racing for you. Great stuff. Well, I hope it's great. Probably the reason why you're here. Maybe. I don't know. Let me know. So, we're back. Club 100. Wilton Mill. I absolutely love this circuit. The best track on the calendar. And I'm back with a new team. Last time I was racing with Mr. Jimmy Broadbent himself. And he was unavailable for this one. Um, unlike last time, we've ditched... Well, we've ditched the um, the Soviet Union flag, and um, well, I'm not a fan of communism anymore. I've gone for Ghana. I like the flag, nice and bright, very easy to see. And it was never a good idea to wave a bright red flag at a motorsport event, so we've ditched that idea. So my team here, Greg Bernard in the cart there, and Pete Cowan um, on the right hand side. So both experienced Club 100 drivers in uh, their own rights so I thought I'd put together a team here of mercenaries if you like we're all we all know of each other now um, we haven't raced with each other before so it's going to be um, an interesting experience to see how well we can do we're in the top class um, and I suppose an outside shot would be a podium if we can get a podium in our first race together then I think that would be a good um, overall experience. So this is my qualifying lap through the first two corners up towards Christmas corner on the back straight late on the brakes as it's uphill. I actually missed the apex by quite a bit but carry plenty of speed through the corner and then down into the Ashby Heb and this is a downhill corner now so you have to brake quite a bit earlier than you might think. Turning right onto level ground and then just using the extra runoff on the entry and on the exit of that, of that corner into Parkers at the bottom of the hill turning left and then just using the curve on the exit to maximize the track width up into the boot uh, it's known as so through the left and then through the toe section and then into the heel just here and something new for Wilton Mill is this absolutely chunky curb aka Mount Everest something you don't really want to be touching at all because you will end up upside down in the wall it really is absolutely brutal so on my next qualifying lap, and uh, using human DRS there, um, I actually nailed the first sector there, all three corners, absolutely perfect. But then we come round to the dreaded Mount Everest, and guess what, yeah, I absolutely clobbered it and almost flipped over. And um, well, it ruined my qualifying lap, but at least, I've cl uh, at least I've climbed Mount Everest, so swings and roundabouts there. But let's uh, pull up and see how we did in qualifying. Oh, nice. Well done, I was on for a good, better lap, then I launched the right. final curb. Hey, it's good fun, isn't it? Oh, mate. It was all right. Yeah, Felt good. It took a while to get really yeah. into it. It was so close, like everyone in the top four or five were in, uh, within a tenth. Yeah. You just managed to get that little extra thousand. It was the same for everyone though, it, like the first lap stayed stayed like the benchmark for yeah. ages. And then it all started That's changing in the last yeah. two minutes. That's all right. All right. Good luck, mate. I'll see you in a bit. Okay, so good news. We're on pole position for the race. Um, so I, I do think that last lap that I clobbered the kerb could have been a bit quicker than my actual lap. But um, it didn't matter in the end. We got the pole position. Obviously the best place to be. But it is a two hour race. So qualifying is not is still important of course. But it's not the end of the world if you're not on pole position. So this is the sort of rolling up laps here. Um, so you kind of just have to remember exactly where you're starting. And uh, count the amount of rows back. But so at the front it's nice and easy. Just go straight to the front. Pole position on the left hand side here at Wilton Mill. Insane tyre warming skill once again on display. My tyres are now hotter than where the sun. I, I used that one before, but hotter than the sun. So, rounding out the final corner on the rolling up lap. Here we go then, JV standing on the track to slow us down. Nice and slow, rolling up to the line. The lights go green and two hours of racing is underway. The main aim here, trying to keep our lead 
definitely the first lap at least. So coming through turn one, through turn two, I'm back straight. Have someone right on my tail, so go semi-defensive. I know it's not a great idea to go defensive too early in a race, but just on this first lap, just want to keep that lead. And then now we can fully open up and just try to churn out some quick and consistent laps. So lap one, yes, you're going to be under pressure because you've got everyone right behind you, but you've got the clear road, no one right in front of you, of course. So just get your head down, set some clean laps, and ideally and hopefully pull away from the rest of the people behind. We'll see if that happens through the boot corner and then in towards the, the final turn on the circuit with the new massive kerb and then the red and white one, uh, rumble strips there. I was going to say wumble, rumble strips um, on the exit of the final turn. As long as you keep two wheels on that kerb, you're okay. So that's the limit there. So at the end of lap one, we're still in the lead, good stuff. And halfway through lap two, we remain in the lead. Now this is a little bit later into the race, so the first nine laps went fairly well, uneventful, staying in the lead. The rest of the cars are very close behind, about half a second to a second behind, so I didn't really gap them too much. And I've seen my pit signal Ghana flag, so I know that I'm coming in at the end of this lap. Unfortunately, I do have some traffic to contend with, and that is going to lose me a bit of time here. But that is part of endurance racing. You just have to negotiate the traffic as quickly as possible. But knowing that I'm coming in on this lap, it's not always the best idea to go for the overtake. Sometimes you can just stay behind and then just peel in. But we're going to go for the move there on that guy. And then just looking over to the right-hand side, I can still see the Ghana flag to confirm that I am coming in. And then I'm going to peel off to the left-hand side into the pit lane. Of course, this needs to be as quick as possible. Um, you can't speed through here too much. You do have a marshal there watching and you'll get a penalty if you are going excessively quick through this rather dangerous area with people walking about. So up to the fuel bowser, getting out as quickly as possible so that they won't start fueling until you get out of the car. So for those of you with level 99 agility on RuneScape, you'll be very good at that. And then as soon as you pull that hose out, you can get back in. I'm almost in already with my foot just almost hovering there. And then straight into the car, turn the engine on, get that fuel cap back on whilst you're driving out to save those crucial seconds. And we are away, lap number 11. So that's our first pit stop done. You have to do five, and there's five windows in which to do them. So you can't just do them whenever you want. You have to do them within a certain allocated time. So that's the first one done. Uh, so on the exit of the pit I took a big look behind and I had a big gap, I had a, big, I have a, um, a very big gap up ahead as I tried to get my words out there. Um, so actually that was quite ideal to get released into clear air. Now a couple of laps later, just up ahead, um, the guy coming out of the pit lane was a Titan Motorsport and they were just behind me as I went into the pit lane. So down in 7th, really courtesy of um, other people having not pitted yet, but really essentially I'm am, I am actually third on the track. The two guys directly in front are actually there properly for position and they've both pitted. And then the other four ahead are only ahead because they haven't pitted just yet. So at least I have something to aim for directly in front. The battle is right there. So they've only gained about a second in that pit stop. A couple of laps later, so lap 19, you see a big group here. And I'm definitely going to gain on these guys. Because this back marker takes a, uh, a wide line. I, I got the inside on the exit. And then you can see I definitely gained on the two guys ahead. And it just shows you how easy it is in these endurance races to gain time on the track. Um, but then how easy it is to lose it in the pit lane. So even though I had a really good first stint up until the pit stop, I lost maybe a second or a second and a half in the pit, in the pit lane just by not being quite quick enough. But uh, definitely gaining it all back here with these back markers. So up behind this one. So this guy is a back marker here, just trying to get past him as quickly as we can. Just don't really want to lose too much time. We're going to go for the move here. Titan Motorsport now ahead. And he just pushes that guy wide onto the grass and up in the air. So a strong move. Well, we're right behind second place now. Well, what will be second place? effectively the leader there 
uh, black suit, white helmet, just pulling away slightly as yeah, to negotiate that trouble. So now we've overtaken someone in the pit lane. We've moved up into third place. So this is a genuine fight now. So you see the guy in front is second. The guy in front of him is in the lead. So it's very close still. Even on lap 21, about 20 minutes into the race. Up the inside we go. And we're not going to hang about here. Just go up to second and try now to reel in the leader. Rotax means Rotax. And nationally, that is the team I've been driving for earlier in the season. I did uh, the right house round and uh, the Butmore Park round of that team. But uh, they had a full complement of drivers for this one. So no, no space in their team. So we decided to create our own one. So down the back straight into the boot. Clipping that curb, you want to get on that curb and then you see the dotted line as you exit. You want to get, uh, keep your left wheels to the left of that line to give you a better swing through the right hand section of the boot. I'm going to have a quick little montage here. You see over the course of a couple of laps, we managed to reel in Rotax, I mean Rotax, at uh, a few tenths per lap. And by the point here, we have, um, well, we're right on his tail by lap 26. With, quite interestingly, a couple of back markers to contend with. And this can shake up the order. So let's see how this uh, situation gets dealt with. So we've got Ballinger Law there on the left hand side, quite slow through turn one. Go past him. Is the leader going to go through on this back marker? Yes, he is. I'm going to try to follow him through and uh, make sure we stay right behind him, put the pressure on and maybe go for that move. So it's quite crucial when you're trying to follow someone through, you have to be right behind them. And uh, as soon as they create that gap, uh, as soon as they go for the overtake, they create the gap because the person getting overtake goes wide and then you kind of just jump into that space and follow them through. And then you don't really lose any time by doing that. So now right on him, um, it would require a very brave move to go for a late lunge into the boot. So it's not worth the risk at this point here. Looking up the inside, I almost had an overlap there, an underlap, into the final turn, but not quite enough, so we back out for now. Through turn one and two, can I get a good run through here, which would give me an overtaking opportunity into Christmas Corner? Not quite. You see there, through turn two, I've got a little bit of understeer, and it just put me a, a couple of metres behind, and it just wasn't therefore close enough to go for the overtaking uh, move at the top of the hill. So, uh, John Pether here driving very well, not quite able to match him through the turn one and two. I think the crucial place on the lap, if I can just match him through, the, uh, through those corners, I think that will give me a good overtaking opportunity up at turn three, Christmas corner. The best overtaking opportunity on the lap, the end of the longest straight into the biggest braking zone, or one of the bigger braking zones. And place I often like to go for most overtakes is just the easiest way to do it. So through turn one or two this time, can I get a better run? I think he's gone wide this time. Is it going to be enough? Human DRS has been deployed, but again, not quite enough. It would require an absolutely ridiculous lunge of the century to be able to get past him from there. So it's not quite on down the hill. Again, right on his tail. Very, very close indeed, but just not quite able to go for that move. You really do have to make sure you're in a good position. Plus, let's not forget, it's an endurance race. You don't want to go for silly moves. Sometimes it is about just settling down and building gaps to everyone else. So we're lapping at a fairly good pace at the moment. There's no need to ruin that by doing a stupid move and just losing a second. So it can take 20 laps to try and gain a second over everyone else and then you can just lose it by, do some, by doing something very stupid. So lap number 30, can we get a good exit this time? I think that's it, we've got a very good exit, a bit of human DRS, we put out to the right hand side, we've got the underlap, or the overlap, and we are through, back into the lead of the race. That took me a good five or six laps just to make that move because I couldn't quite get into the right position where it really mattered. So he was driving very well and I couldn't quite match him in the important places but eventually getting the job done there's no worries though it is an endurance race as we said no need to rush things we've still got two hours to to get things done so through the boot for the 30th time we're going to try to build a gap to these guys now that would be a nice ideal situation they come out the final turn over the line and i've got a thumbs up there as i've just been 
told by one of the team members, I think it was Pete there on the side of the track, that um, we, we are now in the lead. We don't have team radio, we don't have a microphone or speaker or headphone, whatever you want to call it, in the helmet. So the only way you can signal really is with a pit board, with a flag, that kind of thing. Uh, although some of the teams here, quite a lot of the teams do have team radio, so that does make it a lot easier for them. And it is perfectly legal, you are allowed to do that. So down the back straight, up against a back marker, not quite close enough. And this is a thing you'll notice in uh, endurance racing. Sometimes you just get lucky with exactly where you meet the back markers. And um, on this occasion, I'm going to go for the move into the Ashby hairpin. Not always the best place to go for it, but we get the job done quite quickly. Um, but it actually might be the best place to do it, because sometimes what you can do you overtake at that corner there and it just leaves um, it means that the people behind can't follow you through which is what I did to a couple of people earlier and it just puts a back marker between you and the rest of the chasing pack and it means that you can get away if it takes them half a lap to get past that person if they're a bit slow in trying to get past that slower person then you're gonna gain maybe half a second so you can just gain a bit of, a bit of ground get out of the slipstream range and um, as I do take a look behind, and they, the gap actually went up to about a second and a half as they had trouble getting past that guy. And so there was a bit of an altercation between them. And so I, look, I looked on the data, I read the numbers on the Alpha Live results, and it showed that they had some sort of coming together or something. They lost about a second and a half on that previous lap. So I overtook that guy at the right time, I think coming up against another back marker now just you see they're just following exactly in these uh, wheel tracks just trying to maximize that slipstream as much as possible not that it makes a huge difference but any gain is a gain so you might as well do it yellow flag uh, yellow flag through the final corner I think someone's just recovering from a spin but now we are uh, good to go uh, for overtaking so yellow flag no overtaking but as soon as you go past the next post you are allowed to overtake and we're going to do exactly that into Christmas Corner, past another back marker. So again, past them nicely and quickly. And I felt as though my car was really good in a straight line. It had okay low-end acceleration, but it had really good top speed. Uh, so a lot of these carts, even though they might be even over a lap, some will have slightly better top speed, but a lower uh, acceleration. And some will be other rounds, a slightly better acceleration, but not as good top speed. So this guy took a really defensive line. I'm not sure why. I pushed him in the back to boost him, to help him, and then he took a defensive line, I'm not quite sure why he did that, because that just lost us both time, but uh, no worries, uh, we end lap number 38, still in the lead, and moving to lap number 40, I was just monitoring this group up ahead, there's a big group of about five carts, and when you're overtaking back markers, you ideally want to overtake them when they're on their own, because you can just kind of go through them a lot quicker. But when they're in a big group, it does tend to slow you down a lot more as they're fighting a lot more often. So I'd rather overtake five single people than one group of five, if that makes sense. This guy points me through. Um, so that is sometimes the benefit of people having team radio, because sometimes they see that the leader is coming through, and then someone on the pit will just tell them that the leader's behind you, just let him through. No point in losing time, don't fight him or anything. Um, so sometimes that does tend to happen. Lap 45, so in case you're wondering, the gap is still about a second to Titan Motorsport behind. And there is the Ghana flag, one of those pixels um, in the middle of the screen. So that gives me a one lap confirmation. So I see it, that means the next lap round, I'm going to come into the pit lane. There it is, you can see on the left hand side there. So now, I know that I'm going to come into the pit lane at the end of this lap. Um, the golden rule though really is don't follow anyone into the pit lane. So if this guy for example in front of me right here wants to go into the pit lane, don't go in, just go around again and then wait hopefully for the next lap and then it'll be clear. So we're going to perhaps go for this move. Not Again, it's not ideal to have someone right in front of you on your in lap because it makes um, your life a little bit harder should you go for that move. At this point here I'm not quite going for it. And then here again just backing off because I know that I'm going to go into the pit lane so sometimes you can actually lose more time by um, going ahead and then uh, holding each other up on the way into the pit lane but eventually we 
do go in and we were exactly followed by Titan Motorsport there. We lost maybe a few tenths on that lap hold up behind the G3 driver. But no worries, into the pit lane we go. And that's the end of my stint. So my race is over pretty much. So we now hand the, car uh, the cart over to Pete Cowan for him to do his job handing over the fuel cap. He puts his seat insert in. So we have different uh, weight levels and uh, different comfort levels of the seat. So he has a little insert there to make it a little bit more comfortable. And then we push Pete out onto the track and it's up to him to put in a good 40 minute stint. Oh. <laughs> that was alright. I'm jumping on the scale then. Oh yeah. weight fine 85.4 he had to be 85 so we're just over that um, by this point of the race I don't know how uh, lap 83 so this is towards the end of Pete's stint uh, so there's uh, Greg now out in the car and that number one there in the orange suit right orange suit very easy to see that is third place hunting us down so we're in second at this point uh, this is about an hour and a half into the race uh, so Titan were actually like half a lap in the lead or nearly a lap in the lead although have hadn't pitted and we were fighting really for second. We're in second, and uh, the guys in the orange suit, racingclassics.com, um, maybe five, six seconds behind. So here they come out uh, doing their pit stop. So they come out, and then we just go through the shot there. So we just came up behind after a pit stop. This was about 20 minutes later. And then there was a massive altercation. So you can see Racing Classics there with his hands in the air. So there was a big crash between him and Titan Motorsport there and they both lost a lot of time. So by this point, so one minute to go, we were 23 seconds off the lead, four seconds ahead of third. We're sitting in a second place, and yes, our team name is only here for views. So thank you, viewers, for watching. Um, and this point, this is the end of the race, near enough. So Greg goes through, and then there's Racing Classics, uh, so about four seconds behind. Final lap, and you wouldn't believe it, our chain snapped on the last lap our cart broke down because the chain snapped so this was absolutely unbelievable i couldn't believe it um, this is something that never happens basically never happens in club 100 but um the last lap i went and had a look at the car and there it is the chain is completely gone came completely off but luckily because of the amount of laps we did we were still classified in third place overall so we still finished on the podium, which is really cool. And you know what? It was a really good race. I really enjoyed it. And I'm just going to leave you here with the podium ceremony. So again, thank you very much for watching, everyone. I do hope you enjoyed the video. Let me know your thoughts, as always. And I shall see you next time. Thank you so much for watching. Goodbye. Well done, mate. Well done, Pete. And a warm welcome back to Pete Cowan as well. Well done, Steve. Okay, so here for views. And uh, runners up then, runners up not just uh, in class but overall. Congratulations, team number one, racingclassics.com. Uh, uh, Wilson Mill, congratulations, your winners, team number nine, Titan Motorsport.